This is Expert Course Commentary. So today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about how to add commentary to your evidence in your body paragraphs and really focus in on how to write commentary that allows you to really provide a lot of analysis and to put your unique voice into your writing. So remember that when we talk about commentary, we're also talking about elaboration and uh, we're really just working on explaining our evidence, showing how our evidence is meaningful and relating it back to our thesis statement. So uh, I have an example quote here that we're gonna use uh, as we talk about commentary coming from one of Tolstoy's short story, How Much Land Does a Man Need? And I'm just gonna remind you now that every time you use evidence, whether it be in the form of a quote or uh, maybe it's paraphrased information, whatever it might be, you always have to comment and elaborate on it. That's just one of those things that you always have to do. Let's refresh our memories with the three steps. Step number one, the what. Explain what the quoted evidence is saying. This is where you can offer the reader context. Where is this quote coming from? You can paraphrase it into your own words. You wanna make sure that the reader, even if they haven't read the text, still understand your evidence and how you're going to use it. Moving on to step two, the how. This is where you wanna explain how the quoted evidence relates to the topic sentence. How does this serve as good evidence for the points that you're trying to make? Uh, this is your chance to refer back even to the thesis statement so that you know you're staying on track with your writing and you're not flowing off topic. And then finally, the why. Explain why the quoted evidence is important. Uh, as I mentioned in my last expert course video, this part of the analysis process is really important because only you can analyze the text in a certain way. And that happens here in step three, the why. What is the significance of the evidence you're providing? Uh, this might be the most challenging step, but it's also where the true analysis occurs. And although it is challenging, it's your opportunity to kind of offer your unique voice on the subject. So just to recap, the what, what does the quote say? The how, how does the quote relate to your main idea? And the why, why is the quote significant? Now, as we continue to talk about commentary, it's important to note that one of the areas in which you can strengthen your commentary is in the way that you write it. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about syntax here, which is just the way words are arranged in a sentence. So syntax really has to do with the purpose of the writing. Your syntax is gonna change depending on why you're writing. So for argumentative writing, you're trying to persuade the reader. So that's gonna impact the type of syntax you use in your writing. One of the ways to improve the syntax in your writing is to use a variety of sentence lengths. If you only use short sentences, the reader is going to get bored very quickly. You want to instead use a variety. You don't have to avoid short sentences. Short sentences have a time and a place. But you also want to mix it up so that the reader can really move through the writing effortlessly. Also, you don't want to inundate your reader with too many long sentences where they're losing track of the main idea. So the best way to go is to use a variety of all three. Now there's also a few other ways that you can use syntactic variety. There's the basic structure, where you're just providing a subject and a verb. You can change the conformity of your structure by putting the verb in front of the subject to kind of switch things up for the reader, and it kind of grabs their attention too. Um, you can use parallel structure. If you want to make a few points uh, equal in importance, then you would want to use parallel structure. You can also use punctuation by using a semicolon or a colon to uh, make a longer sentence, then your reader is able to kind of see how ideas connect together. You can also build syntactic tension by waiting till the end of a longer sentence to provide the main idea so that the reader is almost hinging on what you're saying until you get to that main point. Or in a reverse option of that, you can do a loose sentence where you offer the main idea right away and then provide some context afterwards. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways in which you can change up your, your sentences by using different syntactical choices. Uh, syntax can seem complicated, but really it's about thinking how you, are you arranging words in a sentence to make the, the best experience for the reader. Okay, now let's put this all together. Here's an example of commentary that has syntactic variety and completes the three steps of the what, the how, and the why. So the example we had 
uh, to Tolstoy's short story asks the question, how much land does a man need? The answer, six feet from his head to his heels was all he needed. Notice the proper MLA citation. The pro protagonist, Pehom, desired more land, more money, more success, but instead he was left with more regret than he could bear. Tolstoy suggests that materialism is the root of evil. Tolstoy manipulates the reader using the fable structure in order to ensure that his message is received loud and clear. We work towards our death when all we strive for is monetary success. As long as we continue to blindly strive for more and more, chasing our way up the corporate ladder, we'll fail to see the life passing right before our very eyes. This is just the commentary, so you would have to embed this into a larger paragraph with a topic sentence and concluding sentences, but it offers an example of what a really detailed, thorough analysis and commentary would look like.